Hello and welcome. My name is Seshu and I'm part of DVCom support and training team. In this video, I'm going to show it to you how to configure the zones in Sang for Firewall. So the fun is started guys. So let's go and see it exactly how I'm going to do the configuration of my Sang for Firewall. So before we jump into the configuration, let's try to understand my laptop policy. Then after that, we are going to start the configuration. You can see here, in my laptop policy, we have a NSF 1050 AI and uh, by default, as I mentioned to you in my earlier video, the default IP address for Sang for Firewall is 10.251.251.251, which is last 24. And I am going to access this firewall through 10.251.251.10. And you can see here, I connected directly on management port. And this is the IP address which I configured in my PC. And also you can see here, I just want to configure one interface for internet. Like you can see here, there is a ETH1. This interface, you can call it as a ETH1. And there is a, another interface which is ETH2. So this interface I am planning to configure it for my lab. But here little bit before you step into the configuration guys, you need to understand one interesting thing. Basically, Sang4 is a zone based firewall. Is it? Zone based firewall. So what do you mean by zone? <laughs> it's a surprise guys. Zone is nothing but, for example, you guys can see here, usually we are going to keep all our computers into the LAN. For example, if you see here, all my end devices, they are into the LAN, right? these computers so this area we can call it as a zone so we can say this is my LAN zone and uh, this is my WAN zone the internet which is there this is my WAN zone in case if I want to maintain a separate servers maybe the servers I want to keep it for publicly available so I can create one more zone called DMZ demilitarized zone so in case if I want to keep my guest users and all into separate zone, I can create Wi-Fi guest or I can say guest zone. So here, what is the advantage to create a zones? If you see slightly guys, for example, if you take a layer two switches, what we are going to do, we are going to create a VLANs and all, right? So why we are going to create a VLANs? Because we want to segregate our traffic. So by creating the VLANs, we are going to create some additional security to our network. So similarly, the advantage of creating a zones, if you create LAN zone, WAN zone, and DMZ and guest zone, so you can apply the policies, you can apply some restrictions. So for example, if you say that, I just want to say for the LAN zone, I don't want to allow like Facebook, YouTube and all, I don't want to allow it. So let's say for the guest users, I want to limit the bandwidth or I just want to apply some restrictions. So this is the best way to configure the zones. That's why in the SANG4, before you are going to step into any configurations, make sure that you need to create a zones first. Then after that, you can shift your interface into the specific zones. That's the beauty of the SANG4 firewall, guys. I really love it. I am really happy to record this video series and we are going to see that. And one more interesting thing I want to tell you here. So as I told you, this is port number one, which is Ethernet one. And you know, this management port, which I told you guys earlier, this is the OOB, out of bandwidth uh, management port. And this is the Ethernet zero. Okay. And by default, this is belongs to a management zone. And Ethernet one, still I didn't shift into anywhere. And uh, the port which is connected to my LAN segment, which is Ethernet 2. So here my plan of action is that I want to configure the WAN zone for my internet connectivity and I want to configure the LAN zone for my local network. So first I need to do this. So I want to configure two zones. One is the WAN and other one is the LAN. Then after that, I'm going to shift the port number ETH1 into WAN zone. Then after that ETH2, I'm going to shift into LAN zone. Then after that, I'm going to show it to you how I'm going to configure it. This is first step that I'm going to do it. And second step is that you guys can see here, 
right now i'm showing that i'm directly connected to the internet guys but to be honest i didn't connect to the internet why because i am just recording these videos at my home so actually in my home i have a router which is provided my local service provider so basically i am working in dubai and we have a local service provider it's lot and do but i am getting a internet connection from do so this router which is connected directly to the internet okay so this router is directly connected to the internet and another interface what i did i directly connecting to my eth1 that's my plan i want to connect there and here what i did i configured the ip address for my local network 254.1 which is last 24 try to understand this one guys and here in this router we have enabled the dhcp so in my home everybody is going to connect into this network actually so i am going to keep my nsf firewall also into the same network so that you know if you enable the dhcp you will get the ip address from this subnet which is 192.168.254.0/24 subnet okay guys but what i what i want to do now i want to keep the ip address dedicatedly let's give 192.168.254.15 which is last 24 this is my plan so i am going to configure statically and i am going to write one default route towards my local service provider which is my local router okay guys but whenever you see this then don't get confused okay and also in the sangfort they are going to support static if you want to configure static ip address maybe from your service provider if you are going to get a static public ip subnet mask default gateway preferred dns and alternate dns you can configure it directly and if you have a dhcp you can configure it so dhcp means your service provider is going to tell you you don't need to do anything just connect to your wan interface by default you will get the internet connection and also the sangfor is going to support pppoe guys point to point protocol over ethernet so that you can choose according to your service provider what is the recommended configuration so you can do it okay this is what i'm trying to do it guys let's go and jump into my configurations without any delay so let's erase this okay just i want to move this guy here okay just escape from here then open the browser so i'm really sorry for this open the browser so type the ip address as https colon slash slash 10.251.251.251 colon 8443 so if you see my previous video I have shown to you how to change the default port. So by default it's a 443. For security reasons I have changed the port as 8443. Say enter. Then the default username admin but I have changed the password. I have given very complex password which is this. I don't want to reveal it guys. So then after that you can click on login. So once you log in so as I told you most of the time guys the configurations and all we are going to do it from network so in case if it is a starting time you just see my video how i access and how i change my you know the device name and system time and i have showed it to you my previous video and you guys can see here you can go to the network and you can see you can all the interfaces so you can see on the left side there is a interfaces and you can see all the interfaces i can see it but you can see one surprising here in sang for there is no lan there is no wan like that because by default all the interfaces you can configure according to your choice either layer 3 interface or layer 2 interface or virtual wire interface it's totally your choice guys that's why i love a sang for a lot it's a beauty so that in case if you go with any other vendors they will tell you hey these ports for lan these ports for wan they used to say like that but in sang for it's totally is your choice how you want to configure it. so that's why i really like it and you can see here the default what i am seeing here all these interfaces are layer 3 interfaces you see here all these interfaces are the layer 3 interfaces and you can see eth0 as i told you it's a out of band management port so that you are not going to use this port this is for dedicated for management and eth1 eth2 3 up to 10 ports are there so you can configure it either lan or wan it's your choice guys 
and also if you want to have a multiple internet connections you can directly terminate here that's the beauty of that and you can see here whichever interface which is part of your van you can able to select it so as i told you at first time when you are going to set up this firewall you need to configure the zones so go to the zones and there is a lot of predefined zones are there but to be honest i don't want to use the default one i want to create my own can i yes you can but i want to delete this exist existing whatever zones are created i just want to delete it why because i don't want to use all this okay let's go and do that select all and say delete except the out of band with band management port says yes. so i deleted everything guys <laughs> now i am going to create a zone click on add then after that you can specify as i told you that i am going to configure the van zone and i want to make it as a layer 3 interface but i will talk about what is layer 2 and virtual why don't worry about it you just follow my video series you will get to know everything guys so let's say that layer 3 so as i told you as per my lab topology eth1 i am planning to use it for my van zone so you can see here i i am going to create a zone after that i am going to shift the interface into that specific zone so eth1 is belongs to van zone and it's a layer 3 interface so layer 3 interface is nothing but it's a routing interface so that you can assign the ip address to that specific interface that's what exactly you are going to do it here then after that you can click okay now you guys can see here the van zone has created and i have shifted eth1 now click on add then i want to create a lan zone then i want to use it as a layer 3 interface so i want to shift to eth2 then click on okay then as per my lab topology i have created van zone and lan zone now you move back to the interfaces now you guys can see here eth1 is belongs to a van zone eth2 is belongs to a lan zone and now the second step is that let's go and configure it and uh, on one more thing did you guys notice here it show green color why it showing green color because my laptop is directly connected on eth0 that's why it showing but still eth1 is not showing because i am not connected so that's a beauty of this sang for you know interface if you see here everything you can able to see it so now you can just click on the edit you can guys can see here click on the edit to configure this specific interface then after that go to the edit so once you go to the edit you can see either you want to enable or disable or you want to give any specific name so i just say that connect to internet so this is my layer 3 interface and it's part of your van and as i told you guys basic attributes i am going to connect to the van van attribute then after that if you want you can configure ipv4 or ipv6 and if you want enable the jumbo frames and all you can do it from here so i just want to configure ipv4 and you can go to either static or dhcp or pppoe it depends on the requirement let's say if you get a uh, internet connection from your service provider if it's a pppoe select the pppoe if it is a static you can select the static and specify the ip address default gateway whatever information if you get it from your service provider you can just do that so right now i want to assign the static ip address so you can say 192.168.24.50 that's the ip address but still it's showing in red color because i need to specify the subnet mask that's very very important guys so you can say just simply say slash then 24 that's my subnet mask and what's the default gateway which is 192.168.24.1 then after that you want to see here something strange here management service are you going to allow web ui whenever somebody trying to access through this ip address do you want to allow them for web user interface yes ping yes ssh yes snmp but make sure that one guys in if you are working in the real time in production please don't do that <laughs> it's not a secure that's what so i just want to i don't want to do that okay but still i am in the lab environment it's okay for me i can go and do that so that by using this ip address i can able to access my device directly then after that you can click okay so once you click on okay you guys can see here i am going to connect to my internet connection so let's go on so let's go and see i just connected now immediately i got the status updated you can see here it's connected now and another thing what i told you guys 
I need to create one default route, right? So you can go and see here in the routes and check here all the routes. So this is your routing cable, but there is no default route. So as for me, I need to write default route to access the internet, right? So let's go to the static routes. Then after that, you can click on add. So once you click on add, it's going to ask you, do you want to add one route or you want to add multiple routes? Yes, I want to add only one route and protocol is IP version 4 and status is enabled. And I'm going to say, hey, it's a default route, buddy. Default route. So I, what is your destination? So destination is 0.0.0, .0 slash 0. Then after that, through which interface you are going to send the internet traffic to ETH1. And what's your next stop? So as I told you, which is 192.168.254.1. Then administrative distance and metric, I don't want to care about it. And one more interesting thing, you can see here the route priority guys. So just click on that and you can see direct route, the first priority, second policy based, third one, SSL VPN, IPSX VPN and destination route and after the default route it's this is the priority for the route we'll talk about more in this series guys don't worry about it and you can see in the custom in case if you want to change the sequence yalla, you can go and change it so i don't want to do it at the moment so you can say no then after that you can click on save and add so that is the beauty of sign for guys so in case if you if you click save then immediately this window will get disappear and the route is going to add it but if you want to add multiple routes, so you can click on save and add. You can see here. You can change according to your requirement. And you can see the route has added. And now it's saying that it's valid and status is perfectly fine. That's the beauty of it, guys. So now I have configured successfully. Now you can go to the interfaces. And I want to configure my LAN interface. So here, what I'm trying to do, guys, this LAN interface I want to decide which subnet I need to configure it. So for that, I want to configure 192.168.100.1. Let's say 100.0, which is my slash 24, which is the subnet that I'm going to configure it for my LAN users. So simply you can just click on edit and I can say this is for my LAN users. Then after that, you can guys can see here it's a layer 3 interface and it belongs to a LAN zone and I want to assign the static IP. So how? 192.168.100.1 slash 24. Then what's your default gateway? There's no default gateway here guys for this. Why? Because this is the one I'm going to act as a default gateway. So that's why I just keep it like this. And you can see from here I want to access my sign for firewall. So for that I'm going to allow web UI and uh, ping SNMP and SSH. Then click on OK for this. Now let's go and connect it. But here one thing I want to tell you guys, this LAN interface, which means from Ethernet to what I'm trying to do here, I'm going to connect my another laptop is there for testing purpose guys, okay? For testing purpose, this Ethernet to what I'm trying to do, I don't have any network switch. So I'm going to connect to one new laptop, which is my Mac. I'm going to connect directly. Okay, guys. So let's go and do that. So I'm going to connect now. Yes, I have connected now. You guys can see here the verification. So it has successfully connected. So this is what, how I configured my LAN and the WAN zones. Then after that, how I assign my IP addresses. So in my next video, what I'm trying to do, I'm going to show it to you how to configure the DHCP and I want to show it to you a couple of other configurations. So again, I just want to mention to you guys in Dubai in October 14 to 18, there is a JITEX. So at the time of JITEX, I'm going to show it to you all the products of Sank4. So sang for not only firewalls, there is some other security related firewall, security related products are there. So those products also I'm going to keep it in the live so that you guys can visit our DVCom booth. Okay, for the sales, please send us an email, sales at datawise.com. For support, please send us an email, support at datawise.com. I hope this has been informative and I would like to thank you for viewing.